Gran Turismo 4, a masterpiece of the racing genre, has captivated millions of gamers worldwide since its release in the mid-2000s. This iconic game has stood the test of time, remaining immensely popular for the past two decades. But what if I told you there is a way to elevate this already amazing game to new heights? Welcome to the world of modding, where passionate enthusiasts push the boundaries of what's possible and breathe new life into this racing gem. In today's video, we delve deep into the Gran Turismo 4 Spec 2 mod, a game changer that introduces an array of exciting features and sets the stage for potential future advancements. Get ready to witness the impossible become possible, as we showcase the remarkable work of talented modders who have transformed Gran Turismo 4 into a dream come true. Before we embark, I must clarify that I am not directly involved in Gran Turismo 4 modding. I'm just here to share the incredible work of a dedicated team that has not only modded Gran Turismo 4 itself, but also conducted extensive research and development to bring us to this point in the first place. They deserve all the credit for the advancements we have today. Now, let's dive into the Spec 2 mod. First, let's explore the numerous quality of life improvements this mod brings. In the options menu, you'll find that the secret and monitor settings are implemented without the need for secret codes, making it easier to adjust your chase camera settings without configuring the PCSX2 controller. Additionally, a language selection feature has been introduced, which was originally absent from the NTSC U version. One major annoyance in GT4 was disabling stability and traction control for every newly acquired car individually. But with the Spec 2 mod, you can now press the start button in the GT World main menu to disable these assists for all newly acquired cars by default, saving you valuable time during your playthrough. The same menu also introduces a randomizer option allowing prize cars to be randomized based on your in-game username, bringing an element of surprise to your winnings. You can toggle this on or off at any point during your playthrough, if you prefer. Furthermore, a quick access menu has been implemented, enabling you to swiftly navigate to the GT World, Home, Car Settings, or Options menus by pressing the select button in specific areas. The last two changes to mention are a revamped dealership screen, where everything is laid out more linear, and cars now have descriptions on them in the dealerships. These descriptions are ported over from Gran Turismo 6, so if you're curious about the history of any of the cars that you come across, you can find it right here. Now let's venture into the events section. Upon selecting a racing event, you'll notice a new garage button granting you quick access to change cars without returning all the way to the home screen. Moreover, a yellow icon on the right side of the race selection screen will display the opponent's list, providing valuable insight into the competition that you'll be facing for those races. On the topic of events, let's discuss the exciting addition of new content. The Spec 2 mod introduces fresh racing events, such as the Super Wagon series and the Beginner events and the Snakebite Festival and the US events with more events currently being brainstormed, tested, and added. Existing events are also undergoing tweaks to enhance the gameplay experience, such as reducing the Sunday Cup to three races, modifying the Citroen 12CV one make event to a single race, removing the reverse configuration races in the special condition events, along with other similar changes to cut down on unnecessarily long tasks. Those are just a few examples. While the mod does include the prize car randomizer option, the vanilla prize cars have also been changed around to ensure a more refreshing experience and prevent duplicate wins of cars used for certain events, like winning the Subaru 360 and the 360 one make, and the 12CV and the 12CV one make, reducing the annoyance of some of the certain prize cars you'll win throughout your playthrough. Another change regarding prize cars is the attainability. Previously non-purchasable cars that you can win as a prize will now not only have a resale value, but you'll also have the opportunity to purchase those cars from the dealership after you win them. With this addition, no prize car will be restricted to a one-time acquisition because you can always buy another at any point. Moreover, the mod introduces the cut chase battle driving missions that were originally omitted from the game. Not only have these driving missions been recreated, but brand new missions are also on the horizon. The existing missions will also receive tweaks to make some of them less difficult to suit more players. In terms of vehicles and tracks, the mod has introduced cars from the PAL, NTSCJ, and Korean releases into the NTSCU version, including models like the Hyundai Clix, SO Supra, SO TSO 20, 
and the NC Miata from the Miata demo, along with several others. Additionally, the Valencia track from Tourist Trophy has also been ported over to GT4, although some issues remain that need to be resolved before incorporating it into GT mode, such as the AI breaking near the final turn for no reason, and the pits being closed off. It will certainly be a challenge to fix these issues, so at the time being, it will remain in arcade mode. This just highlights some of the potential issues that could be faced when importing content from other games. If you've been following this channel for the past month, you may have already heard about the highly anticipated car sound improvements. Gran Turismo 4 has long been criticized for its lackluster engine sounds, but this mod finally addresses that concern, delivering a more pleasant and immersive audio experience. If you'd like a sample, I have a sound compilation video linked in the description below if you would like to check that out. And that concludes the confirmed content you can expect from the Spec 2 mod. Keep in mind that this is still an early stage of development, so changes may occur before the release and exciting new additions may also emerge. I've also received several frequent questions on my previous GT4 videos regarding Spec 2, so I figured I'll address a few of them here as I have answers from the mod author himself. For starters, plenty of people have been asking about the possibility of brand new cars and tracks being added to the game. As of right now, creating entirely new cars and tracks is not possible, but it could end up potentially being done in the future. However, if this does come to fruition, making new cars and tracks is going to be an extremely demanding task, so to be on the safe side, they shouldn't be expected, at least not anytime soon. Another frequently asked question pertains to the AI count in races. Unfortunately, due to the game's limitations, it's not possible to have more than 6 cars in a race. GT4 was designed to operate within the original 32 megabytes of RAM that the PS2 has, and 6 cars already pushes the boundaries of what the game can handle. This restriction is inherent, and unfortunately, it cannot be altered. And the last question is in regards to how the mod is going to be installed. This mod uses the Gran Turismo 4 online beta build of the game, specifically the NTSC U version. The reason why this mod does not use the original retail version of Gran Turismo 4 is because that version used a dual layer disc. Now I'm no expert at the reasons of why this isn't possible because of it, but to put it shortly, the dual layer disc is much much more difficult to work with than a single layer disc in which GT4 Online is a single layer disc. That's why the mod is using the Gran Turismo 4 Online Beta version instead of the Gran Turismo 4 Retail versions. So this mod will be for Gran Turismo 4 Online in TSCU, intended for PCSX2. And so that concludes our discussion of the Spec 2 mod for Gran Turismo 4. Please note that this project is still in development and there is no estimated release date as significant work lies ahead. To stay updated, I encourage you to follow the Admeister on Twitter, who is the author of the mod, and subscribe to this channel for future coverage of changes and additions. And other than that, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.